So El Salvador just pulled off a very tenuous 1-0 victory over Curaçao. It wasn't the prettiest of uh, games, but it was effective in that they got the job done. This is a game they should have won because they're playing Honduras and Jamaica next. Um, a few things I want to say. This is the second time these two teams have met in the Gold Cup, the first time having came in 2017 when El Salvador were also victorious in that match 2-0. But one of my predictions that came true in this game is that Curaçao very much so look uh, like an improved version of themselves from uh, their first ever CONCACAF Gold Cup participation two years ago where they were just swept in the group. They just were completely outmatched by everyone that they came up against. Uh, they looked a whole lot better. They really did. And, and despite the fact that they only got two shots on target for this whole game, uh, I think that was largely due to the fact that this El Salvadoran team looked very well organized. And I was kind of surprised by that. I know that in my finalized Gold Cup predictions, I picked El Salvador to advance. However, I did not expect them to come out today and play the way they did. Uh, they played a very high technical pressing type of game. The passing was fluid. Uh, Carlos de los Cobos, their, their Mexican manager, has this team properly set up in a system that they have adapted to quite well. Uh, it's a far cry that I'm used to seeing from El Salvador because as a U.S. men's national team fan, I'm familiar with CONCACAF sides. We play Central American teams all the bloody time in Gold Cups and in World Cup qualifying. And El Salvador has a reputation of being a scrappy side. They're not among the best in Central America. They tend to put numbers behind the ball. They tend to uh, sit back and absorb pressure. But just the the uh, the passing game in all those tight narrow spaces uh, for players like Nelson Bonilla who scored uh, the winner late on in the first half uh, and from uh, uh, other players like uh, like uh, uh, Ruben Marroquin uh, and, and Jonathan Jimenez uh, before he went off because of his injury um, this was the best I've seen El Salvador play in a long time. I got to be honest, uh, usually they are a, a plucky side to come up against, difficult to break down because they put numbers behind the ball and they come up against a better opposition. Um, but it does seem to be the case, as many Salvadoran fans were saying, that you know Carlos de los, de los Cobos has this side under a, a more efficient and more, uh, more tactically well-set-up team that will cause issues for Jamaica and Honduras in this group. Um, I really, really was not expecting that. Uh, it's not a surprise that they yet again have defeated Curacao. However, they played well while doing it. Uh, it wasn't really a grinding affair. It was, they could have had more, uh, but they forced the Curacao and goalkeeper into making several crucial saves. Um, but for Curacao, uh, I did not read too much into the whole King's Cup success that they had in Asia, which they just returned from, because you consider who they played, India, Vietnam, uh, not among the best sides in the world. Um, but for Curacao, they should hold their heads up high, because uh, they were not thoroughly outmatched in this fixture the way they were against El Salvador uh, two years ago. They very much so did look uh, improved. I'm very interested, going back to El Salvador, though, because this is a team that less than a year ago really struggled with the likes of Bermuda and uh, a Montserrat. They needed a stoppage time goal through Seren uh, to, to, to put Montserrat away in the CONCACAF Nations League qualifying. Um, this has been a really radical transformation for this team. And it seems like with the whole... Uh, the whole thing of the corruption scandal that the players are trying to put behind, maybe El Salvador could be entering a new era where they can uh, become competitive again in CONCACAF to the extent where maybe they can get to the hexagonal. Uh, maybe they can challenge their neighbors uh, like Honduras and Guatemala and, uh, and Costa Rica and Panama um, moving ahead. I think that you know this is very early, and they still have two games to play against the, the, the two on paper best teams in this group. 
Uh, but from what I've seen, the highlights from El Salvador in the last calendar year, they look very well set up and disciplined. They actually look disciplined. And there's a difference, there's a difference between uh, being a side that plays a sort of anti-football uh, uh, brand of the game and a team that is defensively very well set up and, di and disciplined. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. So it seems like El Salvador is heading in the right direction.